I think, you know, the Iranian leadership um, basically forfeited whatever goodwill was generated for them uh, with that massive funeral of General Soleimani. Um, and, and the reason people are so upset in the streets of Iranian cities right now is that basically the government decided to hide the truth from them for three days and, uh, you know, coming up with a phony uh, argument as to what might have happened. And it was really under international pressure that they finally had to give in and acknowledge that they had, uh, there was a human mistake and they had shut down this, this airplane. Um, but, you know, it, the, the protests that are happening here, as you recall, there was another round of protests back in November. Right. So this is just two months later that we are seeing these things because there are so many unresolved issues. There are so many unresolved grievances that the Iranian public have against the state. And every time the, the state resorts to use of force as a way of you know, pushing the crowds back into their homes, it's not as if they have resolved the issue. Right. So the, the, the seeds of discontent are there and they manifest themselves every time. This time around, because of the emo emotional and human cost of, you know, shooting down uh, your own citizens uh, mainly, right, um, uh, the people are very upset. So they're asking a lot of legitimate questions that the government has not been able to answer, i.e., uh, why did you allow civilian airplanes to fly when, you know, right, you know, right after uh, you had fired these missiles if you were expecting American retaliation? That's just simply irresponsible. Okay, and uh, who gave you the, the the permission to try to hide the truth for these three days? So, so the people are coming into the streets, and um, interestingly enough, just like November, um, the slogans have become more and more radical, uh, calling for the uh, resignation of the supreme leader, and basically saying, "You guys are a bunch of incompetents." And, uh, you know, here were some of the cream of the crop of our society, you know, very smart um, graduate students, etc., who were studying mainly in, uh, in Canadian universities. And we have lost all those lives because, uh, you know, somebody was trigger happy, right, uh, belonging to the Revolutionary Guards. So the, the government has, has lied sort of repeatedly uh, to, to the public. Um, uh, in, in, in many ways, in terms of how they have handled the situation, what the, you know, what the main cause of, let's say, a, a, a protest was. Okay, so people might be protesting for economic reasons, and the government is not willing to acknowledge that, and instead they will say, oh, these are just puppets of the United States and Israel coming out to the streets. So that type of argument has been used so many times that it has really lost uh, any type of, uh, you know, legitimacy in the eyes of the of the public. Right. But this time around, it's really uh, the, the emotional aspect of it, uh, of, you know, losing so many lives and uh, being irresponsible in terms of, you know, their, their conduct um, that, that the people are ups upset for. I'm afraid President Trump's, uh, you know, support really doesn't mean much to the to the average Iranian for a, for, for a variety of reasons. Um, Keep in mind that it was President Trump who put all citizens of Iran, right, on, the, on that list of no-fly zone, no-fly list. Okay, so Iran is one of those five, five countries. Um, he imposed all these sanctions um, that, you know, frankly have been hurting the average citizen more than, more than the government. And therefore, that doesn't necessarily endear him to the public. And then last week, um, he came out with this really what I call an irresponsible statement saying that he wants to uh, bomb 52 cultural sites in Iran, right? So that, that didn't sit well with Iranians regardless of what their political view is toward the government. So I'm afraid we will see a repeat of what we saw in November, meaning that the government might tolerate the protests, especially if they continue, and then uh, they will crack down. OK, and um, it might not be as violent as it was in in November, where depending on who you listen to, between 400 to 1500 people uh, might have been killed. Um, but nonetheless, they want to uh, push the people out uh, there for a, a number of reasons, chief among which is that next month in February, on February 21st, they are supposed to have parliamentary elections. So they cannot allow this thing to drag on for too long.